Hi there, and uh, let's have a look at my Tektronix 221 oscilloscope. Now the 200 series oscilloscopes is a range of portable oscilloscopes that work on battery power. Uh, the batteries tend to die and the scope doesn't work if the batteries are dead. Luckily the previous owner replaced the batteries with a 12 volt input jack. Uh, normally the probe is connected directly to the scope, but the previous owner also modded it and put a BNC jack on the back, making uh, life a little bit easier. Sadly, I broke it. I forgot if the input jack pin was plus or ground, and I opened it up, and after closing it back in, I only saw a trace on half the CRT. Uh, so I opened it up again, maybe I... Uh, put it back together incorrectly and after a few times uh, it just didn't work anymore. No trace at all. So let's see if we can uh, repair it. And there we have one disassembled oscilloscope. Now it is uh, all put together quite nicely and uh, compact, but it is still quite easy to take off the boards and uh, service it. So that's uh, really uh, nicely done. Now let's see if I can remove the DC jack so I can place the top cover somewhere out of the way. And that was just glued in by the uh, previous owner. Now there are three circuit boards in this oscilloscope. The board here on the side uh, contains all the controls. Then the board I just removed on the top is the power supply board. And here in the bottom is the input amplifier board. Now in here there would be the battery pack which has been uh, removed. And this board slides in here on the pins on the top uh, to put it all back together. Now, I'm first going to give this a quick visual inspection, perhaps with assembling and disassembling it a few times. Uh, maybe a component got loose or I knocked something over, uh, something like that. Now, a few components have been added on by the previous owner, so it works without batteries. Um, but that all looks like it's still in place. Now, on the other side, I also don't see any signs of any catastrophic failure and no components that look exploded or anything like that. Um, a little look at the rest of the device. The CRT is um, quite nice and uh, small. Uh, and underneath that, I don't see anything that looks obviously faulty. So let's see if I can remove the power board and just power it on and see if all the voltages I expect are correct. As the board is not connected uh, to the rest anymore, I need to emulate the power switch with a small wire. Now this board has a few uh, test points labeled 5 volts, minus 5 volts, 0.2 volts and minus 1000 volts. So those I can uh, check at least. So first the 5 volts, ah, yeah that seems to be fine. Now let's do the minus 5 volts which is uh, close to there anyways. Yeah, that also looks good. Now the 0 0.2 volts is uh, generated together with a minus 1000 and I expect those two to not work as I didn't get any trace. Ooh, yeah that's zero just nothing at all uh, let's try the minus 1000 volts uh, for completion I expect uh, nothing there as well oh minus 120 volts so it's certainly doing something so the input stage is not completely broken but that's not even close to minus a thousand so yeah that would explain why I get no trace let's um dive into that. So after poking around a little bit I remembered that for some reason tantalum caps always fail on me on older equipment and there's a couple of those on this board uh, so I saw these four orange ones in here which are used to filter to voltage lines that I haven't checked yet the 48 and 75 volt line so Let's just see if these are still okay, or they decided to be a short circuit. 
And what do you know? It's a short. Of course it is. Now let's check all four of them while I add it. Uh, the second one seems fine. Now the third one. That also seems fine. And the last one. If I can actually uh, reach it. And yeah, there we go. Hmm. About two ohms. That seems on the low side. So I'll just replace all four of these to uh, be sure. Now, annoyingly enough, there's no plus symbol anywhere on this circuit board. So I really need to <laughs> keep in mind how the tantalum caps are mounted right now and how to put the replacement in. Because, well, tantalum cap or electrolytic cap uh, wrong way around uh, equals smoke and I don't want that. All right, so this is the schematic for the power supply of the 211. Now, this part can be ignored because, well, the previous owner removed the batteries and the 230 volts AC in, so that's all that disabled. And then here is a single IC, the 741, to generate plus 5 and minus 5 volts. And then the magic happens in here mostly. Uh, this is a free running oscillator which drives this transformer. And this transformer will generate 48, 75, 600 and minus 1000 volts. And the minus 1000 volts goes back to these three transistors here um, as a feedback loop. And if the voltage is too low or too high, it'll just the free running oscillator in order to have this fairly stable. Now, this part all was fine. The problem was in here. Namely, here. There's a few capacitors, diodes and filter parts here to uh, make sure the 48 and 75 volts are nice and in check. And these were the capacitors that were bad, especially 741. And well, if that's a short, it shorts the 48 and 75 volts and yeah, everything stops working. I replaced the four tantalums with a few electrolytic capacitors I had with the uh, same capacitance and a slightly higher voltage. Hopefully they'll manage uh, to last a bit longer now. So let's see if we get the minus a thousand volts back. Oh, yes indeed. Minus 900 something. Let me just get my uh, multimeter in view. And there we go. Minus 985, 986, that looks great. Uh, that's most likely in spec. At least it's a lot more in spec than it used to be. So, let's disconnect this and hook it up to the uh, CRT and see if we get a trace now. Right, so I put the uh, power supply board back in and I uh, supplied uh, power. So, let's see if I can get a trace. Let's just... Um, Play with the intensity knob a little bit, see if a trace shows up. And yes, it, yo, it does. Let me just uh, get that on camera. And there you go, That's that looks quite, quite good. That looks uh, nice and bright and uh, sharp. Um, wow. So I guess me assembling it and disassembling it a few times wasn't the only reason that killed it. Uh, just a broken capacitor. Now. Let's assemble this back together and uh, hopefully it remains working. That'd be great! And it's all uh, back together again, so let's turn it on real quick. And yeah! There we have a trace, perfect! I hooked up a frequency generator to test it and it seems to work uh, just fine. Controls work and everything. So, if your baby tech has an issue, it might just be a tantalum cap. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like, subscribe and all that uh, YouTube nonsense.